same thing. Do that process with them that, you, that we're talking about. Expand into their realities using your intuitive aspects. It's very important that you use your heart-mind to understand everything. That's why even the Greeks, which were the first great founders of science, and their knowledge was, of course, the basis in the Renaissance of creating modern science, take all that concept that they, they were talking about when they were around and use that idea. Be intuitive. Use that key of all keys, the heart logic energies. And as you do that, and you see all the stuff around you that you look at, discern with that. Learn to discern. This is the discerner. This is the truth path. Do that. And as you keep doing it, and as you interact with other people, you'll begin seeing similarities one to the other. And then you'll form a community of seekers who are beginning to develop truths and beginning to empower one another, as we were just talking about previously. So it's really important you would use discernment, use your intuitive energies, and be open to all the energies around you, your cultural aspects, the knowledge of things happening, events in your world, and just use that as your, you might call it your compass, and use that to take away all the different ideas and concepts, like an onion, of how you believe. And as that changes, allow your intuitive energies, your intuitive logic to go with it. As you do this, You'll be empowering your true self, you'll be empowering who you really are, and as you interact with one another, you'll begin empowering each other. And this I call a true empowered community. And this, once again, is this grassroots movement that all of us need. That's why people look at what government is saying, let's say in this country, in the United States, and they look at it not as what government believes is what we must believe. They begin to see deeply that what we need to do is have a way for our beliefs and what we see as true to happen. And so that is another, another example of what we're just talking about. That's why I say look culturally into your reality and let this intuitive heart energies lead you to what is the true truths behind all, that, all that's going on and allow it to move you forward. Because as you do this, your consciousness will be expanding and the journey you're going on will become more exciting and more adventurous than you can possibly believe. Yeah, it's funny you, you should mention governments because historically speaking, governments have always been, the only change they've been responsible for has usually been destruction. And almost every manifestation of something better has come from grassroots movements, mm -hmm. which actually has come from the mind of one person. And I think we need to get back and realize the power we have as individuals coming together to create these movements. That is really important. That's, that's why I'm emphasizing understand yourself, see and empower yourself, come together with others, and use your mutual belief patterns, whether they're totally mutual or not, and just melt together in your own unique way to create what I like to call this conscious movement. That's why when I was talking about the planetary activation groups, these are very nebulous groups. They don't really have a, uh, a specific doctrine except for one thing, that we wish to seek a way to use our joy and use that joy to make our communities better. So that is what we need to understand deeply within our realities and as we as this knowing develops and the key to the, all of that understanding and knowing as I said is your heart intuitive energies learn to go inside just quiet yourself whether it's a prayer or a meditation and use that energy to help give you an understanding a broader understanding of what you deeply feel about any object any subject whatever so that you get a better idea of who you really are, where you really want to go, so when you talk with other beings, other people, you begin to see what you want, and you begin to see how what they want can be melted together to create a greater whole, which I call the, the, better, the, the betterment or the empowerment of the community that you reside in. You know, it's, it's funny you should say feeling, because there's a, 
I don't want to mention their names, but there's a group of people that I'm sure you're familiar with that have control of millions and millions of dollars and they're working with mm. some top families and they listen to a lot of what you say and how they determine it, it's they're listening to a few people but they muscle test with mm -hmm. you and I have a friend that also muscle test everything that you mm -hmm. say and, and most of it is uh, test out positive and this the stuff that doesn't test out positive they found over time that it was the wrong time for them, for the individual mm -hmm. muscle tester, but as he changed, the mm -hmm. muscle testing changed. Mm -hmm. So it, feeling is an important part of it because we're so used to using our analytical minds and if you stop and think about it, that's what's got us to this uh, point of madness and chaos, is using our minds and thinking that our perception of life is the perception and like with beliefs, all, all a belief is, is your perceptual angle looking at a particular truth. And if, if I can let go of my belief for a moment and come over and sit where you're sitting and see what you're looking at, mm. I go, oh, now I see what you mean. And it's based on our knowledge, our background, our thing, things that's happened to you. You've been fortunate because you've had a few experiences that helps you ground all this information. Mm. But what you're saying to the people out there is really important because most people have not had an experience. Like I had a, a one UFO experience I was telling you about and that helps to bring this out in a real way to my mind to let this information in. So uh, one other question I was going to ask you. Thinking of it this in a linear way, when do you think uh, some kind of overt event is going to happen that would be undeniable that this is happening? Well, it's very, very close. Uh, the best I can say from everything that I am told, everything that I've seen around me is that it's very close. So I'm not looking at a decade or a half decade, I'm looking at something within the next few years, the next few months, the next few weeks. I don't know the exact time span. But I see a, a series of major events occurring which will shock many, but at the same time what they basically are doing is allowing for everybody to what I like to call instant wake up and understand there is change happening, it's undeniable, and it's time for us to get beyond the shock and awe of it and begin to accept what's happening and then use our intuitives to say, well, what does that acceptance mean to me and to the community that I'm around? Always look at, first of all, what you believe in, empower yourself, and then come with a, in a group of others and use that to empower people. And as a lot of people say, let's walk in each other's shoes with that empowerment in our minds and, in our, and especially in our hearts. One of the things, as I said, with the ancients, the Greeks, the Egyptians, they looked upon the mind as being centered in the heart. And indeed the Greeks, which started most of the modern concepts of logic and philosophy that extends down to the modern age and Western civilization, their basic most important concept was the heart logic, the intuitive energies. Most of the stuff that the great philosophers came up with, was, let's just look at uh, the circumference of the earth. You have a group of people who basically do not even know that anything really exists of any significance much beyond the world of the Mediterranean or the immediate period in Europe, Asia and Africa. And of course they call what today we call the Middle East as Asia. So they looked at all of that and yet the Greeks were able to come within a few miles of the exact circumference of planet Earth by just thinking about it and using this hard energy. So we have to understand, when you look at all of this, you have to intuit that this energy, this amazing energy within all of us, not just in an ancient Greek philosopher, has the capability of understanding immense objects and, and beliefs and knowledge which we do not are able at one particular time to fully comprehend. So 
That's why this intuitive energy, more than the head, is so important. It's why even the Greeks said very much to all the people that they were involved with that the heart energy is the key. As a matter of fact, that's why the ancient Greeks, for instance, uh, uh, Plato or Plateau, as is his proper name in Greek, looked upon the brain as simply being a, radi a heat radiator, a heat regulator for the body. They didn't see it as we today call it the mind, the central nervous system headquarters. What they saw as the headquarters was the heart. So we, we have to realize that those who founded this logical system that we're all now confounding and messing around in and totally being made to believe is the only thing around, that they believed to go even beyond that to the whole process of heart energies and heart intuitive energies to understanding logically the world that they existed in. And that's really important for us to understand. This is really important. Yes, modern science has all kinds of miracle cures and beliefs and proofs that the central nervous system and how it operates in our body can change the nature of our body, but the key point is the intuitive aspect, and this aspect ultimately is our conscious aspect. Because consciousness ultimately is more than just awareness. It's an acknowledgement that we are a spiritual entity interacting with other spiritual entities to create within us, around us, and in every aspect of the universe, life, and that this life is a living life. We are all alive. We are living within actually a master body. We are the cells of that master body and we are all acting together on a spiritual aspect with one another. And as we begin to get more and more into that concept and begin to accept it, we begin more and more to see that our destiny is not just to remain as limited conscious beings, but to go beyond that. And that is something, of course, that if you look at all the major religions on this planet talks about this golden age, this time when we transcend who and what we are and become, as they put it, one with the gods, one with God, one with the spirit that is the essence of all creation. And that is really what we have to accept and understand and become one with is that we are actually at the age, at the very age when this great transcend, transcending transformational energy occurs and we become those things that are prophesized in all these great religious works around the planet. One thing for sure, Sheldon, we're probably the first generation that's alive that looking into our future, mm -hmm. we know now that we cannot maintain what we're doing. Something has to change because you look at peak oil and the food supply, the water, the overpopulation, all of this is coming to a peak here. Mm -hmm. real real soon in our near future. So something has to happen. And I think what I like about what you're saying is that even if what you're saying is going to happen 200 years from now, by doing what you're saying, it sort of helps us handle our environment and handle our transformation because we need to become different human beings and we need to feel with our heart, think with our mind, and somehow find a balance with that because it's, it's almost like the heart allows you to take that step out into the unknown, you know, and, and you do that with intuition mm -hmm. and, and following your heart. But pretty soon you have to hit ground, and that's where your mind comes in to gauge how far you've stepped out, where you came from, and possibly where the next step can be, and taking care of this moment that we find ourselves in, because we're at a precarious place Somebody, someone asked me, they, they said, well, what do you think can help us? What do you think can happen? And I can only think of three things. One would be divine intervention of some supreme being. The other would be extraterrestrial intervention from an advanced species. Or the other one would be some kind of inner transformation where we transform and our consciousness explodes throughout mankind and we truly see each other as one thing, but I, it seems like maybe what's going to happen is a combination of all three of those. Exactly, exactly. That's basically my message has been from day one 